of 1917 divided the world into two ideological camps, capitalist and communist. For the next 70 years, the communists would wage a war of words and images against their capitalist enemies. The goal? To capture the hearts and minds of the Soviet masses with disinformation. To turn them against the enemy, who they said ruthlessly exploited the average citizen to turn them toward the state run by peasants and workers, which cared about their welfare and guaranteed them health, education, and a shining future. A minority party with approximately 200,000 members, the Bolsheviks in 1917 assumed the leadership of 160 million people, scattered across the world's largest continuous landmass. They spoke more than 100 languages and were, for the most part, illiterate. Masters of visual propaganda, after seizing power, the Bolsheviks produced tens of thousands of political posters. Striking pictures and stirring slogans communicated party ideology. Lenin proclaimed cinema the most important art for promoting communist ideology. The animated war for the minds of the people began with short political commercials that delivered the state's message in a clear and entertaining manner. Shown in cinemas everywhere, they encouraged people to form collective farms and join the Communist Party. They promoted the state's tailored vision of Soviet history and fanned hatred of the Americans, the British, the Germans, the Japanese, and world capitalism. The country most regularly targeted by the animated propaganda films was the United States. It was important to keep the Soviet people, most of whom were locked up in the USSR, believing that they lived in the best country of the world. From the 30s to the end of the 70s, Americans were depicted as evil racists, unemployed, exploited workers, and warmongers. In 1922, Vladimir Mayakovsky, the dashing propagandist and poet of the Bolshevik Revolution, received special permission to sail across the Atlantic. He landed first in Cuba, where U.S. corporations ran both the sugar and tobacco industries. His observations were memorialized in a poem called Black and White, which, using Mayakovsky's own drawings, was turned into an animated film in 1933. Black and White tells the story of Willie the old black shoeshine man. Willie makes the fatal mistake of asking the white sugar king, Mr. Brog, why should white sugar be made by a black man? Sometimes I feel like I'm almost Sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. A long ways from home. The film concludes, poor Willie didn't know he could ask the Communist International for help.
Soviet people were stunned when on June 22, 1941, Nazi Germany broke the non-aggression pact signed just two years earlier, crossed the Polish border, and began a war against the Soviet Union. Немецкие полчища рвались к Москве. Затаив дыхание, слушала великого Сталина. Пусть вдохновляет вас в этой войне мужественный образ наших великих предков. Александра Невского, Дмитрия Донского, Кузьмы Минина, Дмитрия Пожарского, Александра Суворова, Михаила Кутузова. Пусть осенит вас победоносное знамя великого Ленина. Against all odds, the Soviet army forced the Germans to retreat from the USSR, ousted them from Eastern Europe, and captured Berlin. World War II would leave 20 million Soviets dead and a generation of wives without husbands and children without fathers. Germans, who had not previously been depicted in the animated propaganda films of the 20s and 30s, immediately became the ideological enemy of the Soviet masses. Первых же дней войны наша студия почти вся переключилась на политплакат сатирический. Они рождались тут же на ходу, тут же и делались, что-то принималось, что-то не принималось, показывались. Но мы жили этим делом. Мы считали себя мобилизованными, обязанными это делать. Это был заказ. Но это заказ, на который мы отвечали действительно своим творчеством, энтузиазмом. Stirring songs, documentary and feature films, caricatures and animated political cartoons helped keep high the spirit of the Soviet people. On May 9, 1945, Nazi Germany capitulated. The Soviet victory was celebrated with animation. I think there is a, some profound difference in the way the Germans are depicted and the Americans. Both are bad in those films. But the Americans are shown as bad guys, but they're still human. The Germans sometimes are shown as animals or robots. They're completely deprived of any uh, traces of humanity. Throughout the 70 years of the Soviet Union, the propaganda machine referred to Western businessmen and government officials as capitalist sharks, exploiters of the working class, heartless, greedy worshippers of the dollar, arsonists of war, the ideological enemy of the Soviet Union bent on destroying the Great World Revolution. One of the most politically impassioned animators of the 20s was Yuri Merkulov, whose work on early black and white propaganda films became the benchmark for animated stereotypes of capitalists and warmongers. Forty years later, during the Cold War, Merkulov was still making animated propaganda films based on the images he created in the 20s.
было это давным-давно. Жилось в те годы нам, простым людям, так худо, что хуже не бывает. Ох, и худо же. From the 1920s to the 1980s, dozens of animated films recounted the official version of how the Bolsheviks liberated the Russian people. First, there were the bread riots of 1905. The Tsarist government ordered hungry Russians shot rather than fed. The Bolsheviks, led by Vladimir Lenin, knew the country was ripe for a revolution which would redistribute wealth and land. Then there was World War I, which left millions dead, fighting for a cause which was not theirs. In 1917, a bourgeois revolution forced the Tsar to resign. A provisional government was established at the Winter Palace in St. Petersburg. On October 25, 1917, the Bolsheviks assumed power. They abolished the provisional government promised peace, land, and bread. Civil war broke out. Умри, мой стих, умри, как рядовой, как безымянный на штурмах мёрли наши. Britain, France, Canada, and the United States invaded Russia. The Japanese invaded from the east. The military presence of these foreign troops on Soviet soil was effectively used by Bolshevik propagandists for the next 70 years. At first, the White Army's advances were successful, pushing back the new Red Army on all fronts. But Leon Trotsky reformed the Red Army, and the Whites' fighting power was broken. The White Army was defeated, and the foreign armies quickly retreated. According to Soviet history, the retreating foreign armies included the Japanese infantry, the Polish army, British naval units, and the Japanese Marines. The goal was the shining future, where everyone would be happy and equal. To reach that goal, the past had to be destroyed. In Time Forward, director Vladimir Tarasov animated poems written by Mayakovsky in the 20s. They advance the party line. Everything old should be destroyed to make way for the new order. Joseph Stalin abolished NEP in 1929 as a means of economic stimulus. He replaced it with five-year plans. five-year plan, starved, killed, and sent into exile millions of hard-working, independent farmers, known as kulaks, who opposed forced collectivization. 
In this film, the man rolling up his sleeves, holding a spike, is a kulak. The second five-year plan rewarded productivity. The most famous worker was Alexei Stakhanov. In this film, his mighty achievements infuriate a foreign capitalist. Успехи социализма, заборщик шахты центральная Ирвина в Донбассе Алексей Стаханов вырубил за одну смену 102 тонны угля, превысив норму в 14 раз. Что? В 14 раз? Невероятно! С современной точки зрения стихни невероятно! Ширится стахановское движение, ломая старые капиталистические нормы. Звонки, как птицы, одна за другой, ты не летят над советской страной. Песню на тебя на новый полей, и стало лучше, и стало веселей. Песню на тебя на новый полей, и стало лучше, и стало веселей. Дружна страна и растет, и поет. Песнею новое счастье хует. Глянешь на солнце и солнце светлей, И стало лучше, и стало веселей. Глянешь на солнце и солнце светлей, И стало лучше, и стало веселей. Хочется в тень необъятной страной Сталину крикнуть спасибо родной. Солнце и воды зими не болеют, И стало лучше, и стало By 1972, when this film was made, communism had brought to the people of the USSR literacy, education through a system of free schools and universities, health, including hospitals and free medical care, guaranteed employment. Dissidents were still persecuted, the people of the USSR were still prohibited from freely traveling abroad, but the Stalin mass purges were history. The shining future promised to the workers and peasants had not yet arrived. And in fact, it never would arrive, at least not in the form imagined by the Bolshevik revolutionaries. Communism is the Soviet government plus electrification of the whole country. Lenin. <laughs> 